Welcome to Make Life Beautiful. We're here in Mongala near Braidwood and we'll be looking at the work of Rob Goulet, research scientist and former major in the Army Reserves for Australia. He's an expert in deep groundwater, probiotics and the reionising of water to make it structured. There's many, many more things that we'll be talking about with Rob, but we're actually on his farm and we'll be walking you through his facility, his research lab, where he does body scans, where he grows organic vegetables and so much more. So enjoy the show. I've reached a, a time in my life now where I'm consolidating my research over the last 22 years, primarily focused on biology and the role of water or the structure of water and how water and biology work together in the function of life. About 22 years ago, uh, I was undertaking research using mapping technologies, both satellite and airborne, and I, I discovered in that process that uh, salinity was not actually due to rising groundwater as the conventional traditional science uh, were focusing on but that the salt was actually moving laterally or horizontally not vertically with groundwater. Now I need to know the reason for this and I found that it was the lack of soil biology and the lack of carbon in the soil, the breakdown of soil structure due to chemical farming and traditional methods of farming using tillage. Now, at this stage, it was quite controversial, politically and amongst public science, to have a focus on a new direction in science. But also it gave me um, an insight into the importance of independence in science and being able to pursue uh, your own objectives. But it was this insight into biology and the water function and how they work together in the soil that led me then to start to look at the role of biology and how we restore biology, that is the diversity and bunts of biology in soil. And that actually led me to the way that biology um, works with water. And that led me to scientists um, in other countries like in America and in Austria to look at the way that water was structured and particularly the voltage of water. So I started to bring together these two science of biology and water and particularly how they worked in the human gut um, and of course this is almost the same as it would work in an animal but also with plants. So, so at a cellular level the way that water and biology came together. So uh, what I've done is to develop a whole range of new products in the range um, for the use of biology in soil, in water, for in the air, for odour control, um, but also using that biology for animal health and for human health. I also have been involved in developing um, devices that change the structure of water, that is they uh, produce a negative voltage in the water. Now water in nature has a negative voltage. So as it moves down a river system or comes out of a, a, a spring, it has a negative voltage. But also, it has high levels of oxygen and it is slightly acidic. So, uh, it, what I need to find out is how do you restore water? That is, water that's been put into storage or moving through a pipe, and because it turns to a positive voltage, how do you get water to hold a negative voltage. Of course every cell in our body has a negative voltage and it's when this voltage drops that um, your health condition starts to drop and you open up the pathway then to, to disease such as cancer. So one way of restoring good health is firstly to get your gut into order with biology and secondly to ingest negatively charged water. So to give you an example, um, our ancestors, say 440 generations ago, would have been eating food from the environment that is covered in biology. So an apple then would have been covered in yeast and fungi and bacteria. Uh, and the food was also 90% water or more. That water in that food had a negative voltage on it. And they also drank water from a stream 
or a spring that had negative voltage. Our body is designed to eat whole food that is nutritious. And this is how we get biology into our gut. In the modern era, we lack this capacity because we're not as connected with the environment. We don't eat from the wild. People are eating more processed food. So my focus now is to restore the biology in the gut and to enable people to drink negative voltage water. We are now in the research lab of Rob Goulet here at Mongalo near Braidwood. We're about to show you how the water is restructured. We've got some Canberra tap water and we're also going to show you how the water is restructured manually. We'll show you some devices that can be put into as big as a hotel or as big as a farm that can vortex the water. We're going to actually test the water. So we're going to actually put probes in the water so you can see for yourself the water negatively charged and positively charged. Positively is the bad, negatively is the good. So that's what we're aiming for. Rob, we're in your lab here yeah. and I very much am interested in you helping me understand how you can charge water so that when you measure it, it's positively charged, then when you vortex it with your equipment that you've designed, it becomes negatively charged. Happy to do that? Yes, yeah. great. Let's go. Now yeah. I have brought with me some Canberra tap water in a San Pellegrino bottle, but it is Canberra tap water. So what we have is a voltmeter um, and a probe using uh, copper. There's uh, an intermediary device here to uh, ensure that uh, other interferences from electromagnetic energy are reduced. So we'll start with um, uh, the Canberra water. We're just putting that into a beaker. Uh, there needs to be sufficient water uh, in here to uh, give sufficient uh, volume to uh, create a measurement. So we put the probes in. So this is the Canberra water. And we'll just turn on the bolt uh, meter. Now this will take a while before the, the, the meter settles down to, to a measurement. So while we're waiting for it, uh, Rob, tell me what is it about negatively charged water that's important? Why is it important to have negatively charged water in your body? Uh, what I've found through measurement over the, probably the last 20 years or so that all natural waters, that is water that flows through a river system or from a natural spring, um, has a negative voltage. It also is slightly acidic. And the other thing is that it has high um, oxygen, which you can measure with an orc meter or an oxidation reduction potential meter. Now, Water that's held in storage or put through a pipe, which is typical of water that would be in an urban area or a city area, um, our research has shown that it has a positive voltage. Now, positive, positive voltage water is not life affirming water. So, the water that would be in a whole food, for example, which is maybe 90% water, it nearly always has a, a, a negative voltage. So, Literal web designed as an organism to drink negative voltage water and our cells have a negative voltage and when they drop you know below um, around about uh, 70 millivolts or say down to 35 that's uh, we're then in a, a state where we start to attract disease or our body cannot cope with regulation and with healing for a body to heal, the cells need to be vibrating or resonating at a voltage of about negative 70, at worst negative 50. And of course, aging in itself is a loss of voltage in your cells. So uh, the, the idea is that we need to be drinking this negative voltage water. 
Now, it's not going to come out of your tap this way. So you have to intervene and have a mechanism, either a device connected to your house that changes the voltage to negative, or if you're in a situation where you can't do that, you need some uh, smaller device where you can um, treat the water inside your house using uh, something like this with uh, a bottle top on top, but this device here will condition the water uh, in this container to a negative voltage. Well, what we're seeing at the moment, this is, um, is Canberra water. Um, it hasn't settled down yet, but it has a positive voltage. Already we can see positive? Yes, there's a positive voltage there of around about, around about 400. It's sitting on about 390. But uh, other Canberra waters we've measured have been around about 500 up to 550. Same as Sydney water? Yes. So that means it might jump around a bit, um, but generally it will settle down after a while. It takes a few minutes to settle, but at the moment it's showing positive around about 500. Yeah, so what we're going to do here is uh, just put the water into uh, this bottle and then we're going to uh, vortex it. So if you could bring that around to the camera and what you've done there you've put the Canberra water into the bottle. Okay, so we've now got uh, Canberra water in this bottle. Uh, the device I'm using here um, is constructed um, with a copper inner and a copper outer and a series of magnets in a a configuration here of neodymium magnets. So if we just put that on on the top, and the action is to spin the water to form a vortex uh, in here, and all the action happens in uh, at this point in the vortex. Now we'd normally do this um, four times. It's just something we've found in our research that. If you do it four times, it, 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 works, um, uh, it works better and uh, it gets the water into a more stable state of holding its negative voltage. So you're turning it anti-clockwise only a few times, three or four or five times? Uh, just three or four times is enough. If you do it vigorously, you'll create the vortex. And we have to do this in a bottled system. It's, it's different if you've got an inline system because uh, the water will already be vortexing before it hits the device because the energy in the device moves in, in two directions. So we've now uh, vortexed this water. So we'll now uh, put it in and see what, what voltage we've got, see whether we've actually changed it into a negative voltage. Yes, and already we've got a negative um, 7, well, only 1200, but it's showing there, but at least you'll see that it's got a negative voltage, which is that little sign just before the number. So th that is a, a significant shift in, in the voltage of this water. It will settle down after a few minutes, but you know, there's a proof that it's... <laughs> It's now holding a, a negative voltage. These are examples of what we call an inline um, device to condition water. They are installed on, either on a copper pipe or a, a, a poly pipe, plastic pipe, that's delivering water, um, in this case to a household, which is a three quarter inch device. This is a one and a quarter inch device. Um, it's normally installed on a farm um, and it's buried in the ground so it's actually subject to the negative energy of the earth and this is normally used to deliver water for, um, for stock so it might be installed on a grazing farm or at a, a, a dairy. The largest device that we have is a two inch which means the, um, the input here is a, a two inch throat and it's normally installed um, 
uh, for horticulture, large horticultural or large irrigation. So now the devices also, when they're built, take on a positive and negative end. And we have actually labelled the positive end, which has to be the input point for the water. By the way, we call these devices a MIA device, which stands for Magnetic Energised Activated Water. 